Hello, hello. Welcome to another legacy video. I'm Chris, and today we're gonna to be demonstrating how to produce all the components for this wall clock. This includes the crown molding, the top and bottom rails that have the custom details involved, the styles and the turn pilasters that were attached directly to these styles, the base molding, and the back panels that have a double hinge motion. All the components shown here were produced on the Maverick CNC system. So let's jump to the machine and show you how it's done. To begin, we'll produce the storyboard fixture plate. A storyboard allows us to greatly simplify the setup procedure and speed up the production process of any given project. That's because we can take any blank of any given size and make it so that the origin of each blank is the exact same position on the machine. For example, in this project, we made the bottom left corner the XYZ0 origin for every blank. From this origin point, everything needed is positioned in the perfect location. For example, the pin alignment holes were drilled so that we could flip parts from side one to side two. The round pockets for the brass inserts were positioned in the exact location so that the clamps could not be hit by any cutters throughout the entire machining procedure. We even engraved a list of blank sizes and the positions of where each blank goes on the storyboard. Now let's jump to the first components to produce our face frame for the wall clock. This is the top rail that's being produced and the first milling procedures is the surface planing and pocketing routines. Here's a tip on surfacing. Whenever you run into a limitation with your planer, maybe your material has a lot of burl involved, or your blanks are too small, or perhaps your blanks have a lot of bow or twist to them, simply put them on the CNC to surface or even thickness plane your components. Quarter inch holes are drilled to match the exact hole alignment that's in the table fixture. So when ready, we can flip the part over to side two. Next, the joinery was produced using a quarter inch end mill including rabbits on either side of the rail and the dovetail joinery that joins the rails and styles together. That completes side one, and with a few pins, we can easily flip and align the part for side number two. On side two, the part is thickness planed and receives a roughing pass for the raised molding. Instead of 3D carving this raised effect, we use the shapes of cutter profiles to give us the details that we need. This greatly speeds up the process and makes it so you have a much cleaner finish. Once the V cutter chamfers that front edge, a two flute straight cutter comes back and cuts out the entire shape of the rail. The top curve of the rail matches the exact curve of our crown molding. These two components will overlap and join with a rabbit joint. Next, the bottom rail is mounted and receives the exact same milling sequence as the top rail. The only difference is that the bottom rail has no curvature shape to it. The last components to produce for the face frame are the styles. As seen before, it is surfaced, flipped over to side number two, and surfaced again. If the blank is prepped to the right thickness, the surfacing processes could be eliminated altogether. Once surfaced, the joinery is again produced with a quarter inch end mill. Two rabbit joints are being machined on either side of the style. Last, the same cutter cuts out the shape and the dovetail joinery on either end of the style. This dovetail joinery on the face frame made the assembly extremely precise and simple. Now let's move on to the base molding. This is comprised of two main components that are glued together to give us the entire profile shape of the base molding itself. To make the assembly easier, and more precise, we use the CNC to drill two quarter inch holes on both components so that we just use pins to align the blanks together when they're joined. On this first base molding component, the part is surfaced, drilled, flipped to side number two, and surfaced again. Relief cuts are then produced in preparation to use larger router bit profiles. Two cutters will be used to shape this molding, a two inch diameter core box cutter and a two inch diameter barley twist cutter. You can see that when combined correctly, the cutter shape profiles create this beautiful OG style curve to the molding. Without this technique of combining cutter shape profiles, you only have two methods to get the same results. First, 
You can order a very large, expensive custom shape profile cutter, or two, create a 3D tool path that takes 10 to 20 times longer to produce. Next, the second base molding component repeats a similar procedure, except this time it uses profile shaped cutters that are slightly different. Once finished, both components are easily glued together by using the pin alignment holes, and you can see when combined, the molding looks great and is perfectly aligned. Now let's move on to the crown molding, which also has two separate components. We'll start with the straight molding. This is surfaced, receives a rabbit joint, and is drilled in order to flip it over to side number two. Once side two is thickness plane, the same milling procedures that took place in the base molding, that is, stacking profile shaped cutters, will also be used here in our crown molding. The tools used for this molding is the quarter inch radius cutter, the two inch core box cutter, the one inch barley twist cutter, the 90 degree V cutter, and the two flute straight cutter. The second crown molding component also receives the exact same milling procedures as the first. The only difference is that this will be a curved crown molding versus a straight crown molding. Using the profile cutter technique, we can have it follow any shape necessary, including straight or curved surfaces. Now that all the molding is complete, let's move on to the box components of the wall clock. The last parts produced on the storyboard fixture are the box side panels. After being surfaced and flipped to side number two, the part is thickness planed and then receives the joinery with our quarter inch end mill. The rest of the box components are all produced out of half inch ply. In order to hold down the plywood, we wanted to switch to a vacuum fixture. So we removed the storyboard fixture and the T-Track table and put on a spoil board onto our grid table for the vacuum fixture in order to hold down the sheet of plywood. All the rest of the box components will be produced out of this two foot by four foot sheet of plywood. This includes the top and bottom panels, the three back panels for the double hinge mechanism, and the clock mounting face with the two brackets. All the rest of the milling procedures take place in this one step. This includes the drilling and countersinking, the pocketing for the mortise and tenons, as well as the relief cuts for the hinges. Once cut out, the box was able to be assembled quick and easy by using the face frame to square up the components. Once the box was assembled, we then attached the crown molding, the base molding, and the back panels. The last part we needed were the turn pilasters that attach to the face of the styles. Again, using profile shaped cutters, you can see how the turning center makes quick work of producing this beautiful fluted spindle. In the turning center, profile shaped cutters can be used two different ways. First, the cutters can be placed on a turn surface where the stock continually rotates. Second, cutter tool paths can also take place on index surfaces where the blank is not rotating at all. There are designs and turnings known as contour sections where a profile shape cutter cannot be used. Instead, a ball cutter simply follows the shape of the contour along the top face while the stock continually rotates to give us the contour shape. The turning tool paths were programmed in Legacy's conversational cam turning software where all the flat stock components were programmed in Vetrix CAD cam software. Once turned, the spindle was ripped in half on a table saw and both pilasters were mounted on style faces. All that was left was sanding and finishing and assembling the clock components. Now check out how convenient this double hinge mechanism works. Instead of having to remove the clock or create a door that opens from the face frame of the clock, this allows the entire box to shift forward so we can replace components, batteries, make changes, and then it easily shifts back into place. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, press that like icon down below. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Legacy's Maverick CNC machines, visit our website by clicking the link right over there. 
If you have some extra time, watch one of our favorite videos, The Best CNC Machine, by clicking the link right down there. Don't forget to subscribe to stay notified on upcoming videos. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.